some of the times we can distinguish people through their language choices. An area where it's interesting to look and easy to exemplify is text messaging. This is interesting forensically because a growing number of cases involve text messages, particularly text messages sent after someone has disappeared and is later discovered to have probably been murdered, and yet their phone sends messages. And I want to give you a brief example of the kinds of things that we can do. Some two years ago, a 19-year-old woman disappeared and no messages either by telephone or by mobile phone. Nobody knew what had happened to her. Her, her car was left in a car park. After nine days, her phone sent two messages to two friends. And five days later, the phone sent two more messages to her father. Those receiving them were not convinced that she had sent them. And so eventually I was asked to look at a series of 11 messages that she had sent in the past to the two friends and see whether it was possible to see that whether there were similarities or differences between the messages that she'd sent in the past and the suspect for text messages. First of the messages was, thought you were grassing me up, might be in trouble with me dad, told mum I was le leaving, didn't give a shit, been to Keswick, camping was great, have to go, see ya. Now, there's not a lot of text there, but there's a lot of information, because text messaging is in some ways like English was in the Shakespearean time. People have much more freedom to make up their own spelling rules. And so it's possible to distinguish people, often fairly successfully. And after analysing her text messages, it seemed to me that there were significant differences in some of the choices in the suspect messages. These text messages were sent in Yorkshire, and people often talk in Yorkshire about my dad rather than my dad. And you'll notice that there's a series of examples here of my being texted as me. There's my dad in the second line, there's um, myself in the third line of the second paragraph, there's going to kill, kill me mum. So there are those. There is the ending see ya, whereas she would typically use the C plus U. We've got phone spelt correctly, where she would typically spell it with an F. We've got I am spelt as two words, where she would typically spell I'm. And most interestingly is the use of the numeral two for the preposition to. So, been to Keswick. Now, lots of people use that, but the interesting thing here is it says been to Keswick, been, the numeral two, space Keswick. She never had spaces after two. So when she used two, this would simply continue. So there were a series of features here and I'll come back to these later, a series of features which led one to say there were significant differences between the suspect messages and the messages that she had previously sent. In other words, different rules were being used to produce these messages from the messages that she had historically produced. Now, of course, when you get to court, one of the things they say is, but you've only got 11 messages. How can you say anything about rules when you've only got a small number? Now, when I went to give evidence, I was fortunate that my colleague Tim Grant had been doing research on text messaging. He originally collected 5,000 messages from 500 people who submitted 10 messages each and analyze them to see what are the similarities and what are the differences. Eighty of the people were texting to each other, so he had 500 participants, 80 of whom were in contact, the other 420 weren't. Now, what he was able to say from these analyses was that if you pair together a couple of messages by the same person, they are more similar than if you pair them with messages by other people, 
people they may be texting to and if you compare them with messages that are sent to messages sent by entirely different people they are even more different so one of the things I was able to say in court is yes we have research evidence that you can take the rules from a fairly small number of text messages and say these are replicated in subsequent messages people are not making up the rules as they text they are drawing on rules that they have previously created they may not realize it if you stop somebody in the street and say do you have rules when you text they will say no no I, I make it up as I go along but they don't they are following rules but rules that they have created themselves so the first thing we're drawing on is the essentially rule governed nature of language that I'm working to rules and my rules in some ways will be slightly different from the rules that you're working to not in terms of grammar but in terms of the kinds of words that I select in order to encode my message and the words that I select to go with those words now of course one of the questions then is how unique are we when we start to put meanings into language how unique are we if both of us are writing on the same topic how distinguishable are we going to be and of course that raises the question for anybody in a university of plagiarism how do you know when a student is not producing their own text but is perhaps producing a text that they borrowed from someone else or even worse borrowed from the internet now well over 10 years ago Alison Johnson here began what was a very important investigation into plagiarism and the linguistics of plagiarism because she had some students to whom she set an essay topic and some of them seemed to be more similar than they should be at that time the institution she was working in had a definition of plagiarism on its website plagiarism is a form of cheating in which the student tries to pass off someone else's work as his or her own typically substantial passages are lifted verbatim from a particular source in fact we discover that typically they are not lifted verbatim typically people get a bit of text and then they play around with it so it's often much harder to find long stretches and so what one needs is another way of picking up plagiarism because you don't want to have to read all the text you want to have some way of picking up plagiarism without actually reading the text at all the texts which gave rise to this were in response to an essay topic which Alison set discuss the kind of policy a primary school should have towards bilingualism and multilingualism and one essay came in, looks like a good beginning, it's essential for all teachers to understand the history of Britain as a multiracial, multicultural nation. Teachers like anyone else can be influenced by age-old myths and beliefs. Great opening, you say. Pretty good. But a little bit further on, you read another essay and there's a sort of an echo and you think, I've read a bit of that before. And then you read another one and there's another echo. And so you get student A saying, it's essential for all teachers to understand the history of Britain as a multiracial, multicultural nation. Student 2 says it's essential to understand the history of Britain as a multiracial, multicultural nation. And student B talks about, C talks about, Britain as a nation is both multiracial and multicultural. And you start to see, look, these don't sound independent. 